Steve Palmer here with SurfSkate Love, and in this video I'm going to dissect, review, and compare 13 SurfSkate trucks. So you can see all these lined up here. What I'm going to do is take all these apart for you. You're going to see all the inner workings of them. I'm going to explain to you how they work, what they're good for, and the ultimate intention, of course, is to help you make the right decision of which SurfSkate truck is best for you. So in this lineup we have Carver C7, Carver CX, Smooth Star Thruster, Yao Meraki, Yao S5, Slide, Waterborne Surf Adapter, Swelltech, Flow, Surf Feeling, Curf Board, Land Yachts, and the Hamboards HST 200. So let's start at the top with the Carver C7, and I'm starting with the Carver C7 because this is the very first surf skate truck ever invented in 1996. So this is a spring-based system. You can see how this moves back and forth like this, and under here you can see that spring. And let's take this apart, see what we have, and then we'll talk about who this is good for and what kind of ride this will give you. So you can see how our spring is right here. This here is going to connect into that right there, like so, and you can see how that is going to create your spring action, just like so. So the C7 is a solid surf skate truck. I like it, I do like other things better. In terms of its looseness, I would rank it underneath the Smooth Star Thruster, the Yao Meraki, the Yao S5, the Waterborne Adapter. It's a nice, smooth, surf-like feel. You'll find a lot of surfers who say that they prefer the Carver C7 for surf training, even over a Smooth Star or a Yao. One thing about it is that it is adjustable using this bolt right here. You can see how that bolt right there is going to loosen or tighten this. Now, the thing that I don't like about, I, I like a loose truck. So when I loosen this C7 about as far as it'll go, what ends up happening is it has kind of a flop. So it'll kind of flop over when you lean, and then it doesn't have a super tight snap back to center. So what I like about the C7 is that it's a very functional, universal surf skate truck. It works well for pretty much anything you can imagine. It's great for street cruising. It's great for surf training. However, what I don't like about it is, number one, as I said, it's not as loose and as smooth as your Yaos and your Smooth Star trucks. And it also can be pretty hard to pump starting out. Once you kind of get speed, then it becomes looser and smoother. What that also means is if you're doing tight maneuvers like snapbacks and you come around a corner, it'll kind of stall out a little bit and then you have to get a hard pump on it to get it moving again. All right, now that I'm nice and greasy, we'll look at the Carver CX. Now the Carver CX, unlike most of these other ones, is not a spring-based system, it is a bushing-based system. So you can see we've got a pivot cup here. It's essentially just like an interesting RKP design that allows for that surf skate range of motion. Let's go ahead and just take this apart and take a deeper look at it. So as you can see, this is a very simple design, and it's also by far the most common surf skate design. So for example, you see a lot of new companies coming out. This is the Taylor shape, and you can see how it's essentially just that exact same CX design. This is the Mindless out of the UK, and same thing here. Just another version of the Carver CX. Very common design. So because it doesn't have a spring, it's bushing based, the result of it is that it is tighter and it's snappier and it doesn't have the same range of motion as you're gonna get from any other spring based system. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're looking for. The obvious cons of it are it's just not the best surf trainer. It's not gonna give you that smooth, wide range of motion with the really, really tight turning radius. But the pros of that are, one, it's good for beginners because it's the most 
comfortable, stable truck to step onto. If you're not used to a surf skate, the very first time you step on a CX, it's a much different experience than if you step onto a Yao or a Smooth Star. It's a lot more stable. But the other advantage to it is that there are some riders who actually prefer that tighter, snappier ride. I've mentioned my buddy Joey Daly a lot down in Oceanside. He rides a Carver Res with CX trucks, and that's his favorite by far because that's the style that, of riding that he is. And the CX is also great for things like pump tracks and bowls. I'm not a bowl rider by any means, but I can ride a pump track a little bit. And of all of the trucks that I've tried on a pump track, the CX by far is my favorite because I want it more stable in those environments. Now we have the Smooth Star Thruster. Like the C7, this is also a spring-based system. So let's take it apart, see what we find. So there it is, the Smooth Star Thruster. It's a bit of a complicated system, and as you can see on this sticker, I technically just voided my warranty. So one thing about the Smooth Star is it is adjustable using this Allen key right here. I actually misspoke in a previous review video and said that it wasn't, but it, it totally is. And you can make that spring looser or tighter, and this does make quite a bit of difference. Like there's a quite a range on that where it can go super tight or super loose. So speaking of looseness, that to me is the big advantage of the Smooth Star. To me, it's the smoothest, the loosest, the flowiest, and next to the Swell Tech, the widest range of motion. Now I'm not a surfer, but based on the feel that I get and the survey data that I've done, the independent research I've done and talking to surfers, my understanding is that surfers prefer the Smooth Star Thruster over any other truck for surf training specifically. So that to me is its highest and best use. My experience is that it's best for tight, sharp maneuvers in small areas, as opposed to longer distance pumping and cruising, which I prefer the Yao and the Slide for. So if you're a surfer looking for the best technical surf trainer, Go with the Smooth Star Thruster. Now we have the Yao Meraki, which is my personal favorite surf skate truck of all time. The Meraki is Yao's latest updated version. They used to have the S4 and the S5, and now they're putting the Meraki on all of their stock models. Let's take this apart and see what we find. So you can see we've got a coiled spring in here. We can take this out too and see that we've got some other parts down here. So in terms of how this Meraki feels, for me it's like the best all around, all purpose, highest quality surf skate truck on the market. It performs extremely well on every single aspect of a surf skate truck that you can imagine. The looseness, the flowiness, the surf like feel, the range of motion. And what I personally like about it is that I find this spring to be tighter than both the Smooth Star Thruster and the Yao S5. And the result of that is that it has a tighter snap back to center, which the end result of that for me means that it's a better long distance pumper and cruiser because you get a little help on that pump. But it still gives me that loose wide range of motion when you want the tighter, sharper maneuvers in smaller areas. What I love to use my Meraki for, one of my very favorite things to do is to take really steep, gnarly hills and be able to have all kinds of control on them with just carving. And the Meraki does that very, very well for me. One very big advantage to the Meraki over the Smooth Star Thruster is that the Meraki is sold separately, whereas the Thruster is not. One final note I forgot to mention on the Meraki is that it is not adjustable, unlike the C7 and the Thruster. To me, that doesn't really matter because I like how it functions anyway, but just be aware of that. Now let's take a look at the Yao S5. This was their previous model. They have the S5 and the S4 previous to the Meraki, and really my understanding is the only difference between those was just a difference in spring for lighter, heavier riders. So you can see this is a little bit more of a complicated design than the Meraki. They really went 
for a, a more minimalistic design on the Meraki. I actually really like the S5 a lot. In fact, I, it has advantages to me over the Meraki. I think it gives you greater rail-to-rail -rail lean. I think this is probably a more a better technical surf trainer, but let's take this apart and see what we got. So here you have it, like the Meraki, you can see it has quite a few moving parts here. And you can see our same kind of a spring here. So I like the S5 a lot. As I said, to me, I would put like the thruster and the S5 in kind of the same category, better technical surfers, smoother, looser, flowier, not as sharp of a snapback to center as you get from the Meraki. Probably more of a rail to rail lean feel. I think you get a sharper turning radius on it. If you're stuck between the S5 or the Meraki, if you're more of a street cruiser like me, go with the Meraki. If you want more technical surf training, go with the S5. Oh yeah, and also S5, not adjustable like the Meraki. Now we have the slide, which in my opinion is one of the best trucks out there. I love the slide. To me, I prefer the slide over both Carver C7 and Carver CX. If you look up close, you can see that this is also a spring-based system. It is also like the C7 and the thruster adjustable using this bolt right here. Now, one thing to note on this is that it does not have a truck on top of it. It really is just this. Now, what that means is you don't get that kind of uh, additional lean that you get from these other trucks, but I think that the way that it's designed, that's okay. You still get good rail to rail lean. Let's take it apart, see what we got. So here we have it. You can see that it's pretty much the same concept as the C7 where this is going to slip into that right there and control that spring. One thing that I do find a little bit complicated about it is you can see these nuts inside here and sometimes those can fall out and when they do you really have to just take the whole thing apart in order to, to get those to screw back in. That's what screws through the deck right there and, and attaches to those. So those have popped out on me and it can be a bit of a pain. But there you have the slide truck. So here's what I like about the slide truck. I call it the most universal surf skate truck. I call it the Swiss Army knife of surf skate trucks. And I say that because in every category or variable that you want a surf skate truck to perform on, it's going to do all of those very well. It may not be the best in any particular category, but it's going to do all of it very well. I think one of the biggest advantages of this truck is that it is a great power pumper. It gives you a lot of forward momentum and the effect on that for me is that it makes for a great long distance cruiser like I like to ride. The two biggest drawbacks of this truck that I find is number one, it does not give you the widest range of motion that you're going to get from a Meraki or a thruster. And the second thing is, is like the C7, it can be a little bit difficult to start pumping. And that has the same exact effect when you're doing like snapbacks, things like that. You'll come around a corner and you'll stall out a little bit and then you have to give kind of a hard pump to get started again. But aside from that, I love the slide. I think slide is one of the best surf skate trucks on the market for 75% of riders out there. Moving on to the waterborne surf adapter. This is your cheapest option to get into a surf skate. You can buy just this adapter alone. You don't have to buy it complete on Amazon for $79. Now, one thing I do want to note about the waterborne is personally, I find this thing a bit of a hassle to work with. Getting this on and off decks, it's kind of intricate and I'm not going to go into that right now. I just want you to see the inner workings of how the system itself works. And they don't give very good instructions for putting it all together. But aside from that, the waterborne truck works and it's a great cheap option to get into surf skating. Now, unlike a lot of these, this is a bushing based system, not a spring based system. So let's take this apart and see what we got.
Okay, so here we have our waterborne. We've got a bunch of washers, and here we've got our square bushing here. So let me just put this back on here real quick, and you can see how this works. There you have it. That is the mechanism of the waterborne. And you can see how it's got that stop mechanism which prevents wheel bite, which is great. So here's my take on the waterborne in, in terms of it's just its performance as a surf skate truck. I like it, I don't love it. I think it has a similar range of motion to a Smooth Star Thruster or a Yao S5 and somewhat of a similar feel. But because it's a bushing based system and not that spring, it has what I would call a tip or another friend of mine calls it a flop to it. It feels almost a little bit unstable. If you tip one of the rails, it's going to flop hard as tight as it can go really quickly and then doesn't give you a pull back to center as much as a spring does. But the advantages to the waterborne are, I find it to be a really great, what I would call power pumper, meaning I think you get a lot of power out of every single pump. Another thing to note is that it's fairly heavy, so it's not the most nimble or zippy ride as a result. Now we've got the swell tank. The swell tech is an interesting animal. It could be said that it's the most innovative of surf skate trucks, but personally, for my style of riding, I don't find it the most functional, so I don't know if that's true or not. But if you look up close, first of all, you're gonna notice that it has a unique three bolt pattern, which means you cannot put the swell tech on anything other than a swell tech deck which has that three bolt pattern now if you can see this thing is complicated and you'll have to forgive me i'm not about to take this thing apart because i don't even trust that i could get this thing back together so i want to just try to show you up close as much as possible how this works so you can see that it has a spring inside here and this provides a full 360 degree rotation let me see if I can get this here for you without it snapping on me there we go so full 360 degree rotation in on that inner spring right there and then you've also have this other spring uh, here which provides this dimension of motion and in the back you can see how it has these stoppers on that dimension of motion but that still is quite a bit. You can see that range there on that. And then you've got a bolt here that you can loosen or tighten. And that just basically will snug this up so that you'll still have the same range of motion, but it's just gonna be a lot tighter in that aspect of it. So here's the deal with the Sweltec. The Sweltec is very, very hard to ride. Because of its full range of motion, it's an extremely delicate balance. You have to balance on this thing just right and if you don't you pay for it if you get the weight wrong on the board because that wheel will tip on you very easily so personally i think the swell tech is for maybe three percent of the surf skate community to me it's the board that's like the ultimate challenge there are guys who talk about it as like i've conquered the smooth star thruster but no i want that next challenge the swell tech is like that next level challenge for the most advanced riders if you are a beginner or an intermediate rider you definitely want to stay away from the swell tech it is not going to be a fun ride for you. Next we have the flow. Now if you look at this up close, you'll notice that it is the exact same design as the slide. There are two main differences. First and foremost, you can see that it's a lot smaller. The second one and biggest one is that if you look inside here, there is a hard stop. Maybe it's better inside here. You can see where that hits right there. So what that means is there's a hard stop to this. When you try to pump it, it is extremely hard to pump and you, if you hit it hard, you're gonna, you knock into that and it basically tips your board and it stalls you out. So I'm not going to take this apart because you've already seen the slide. It's gonna be pretty much the exact same design, but you can just see the difference. It's functional because it does not have that hard 
stop in it like you have in the flow. Let me bottom line the flow for you. Don't buy it. This is not a functional surf skate truck at all. It's very hard to pump. It's not fun to ride. It gives you very, very little rail to rail lean. It's more of a side to side and you have to kind of just use your front foot and your hips on it so you don't get a proper kind of up and down compression and extension that you get in a, on other trucks. So I highly, highly recommend that you do not buy flows. Moving on to surf feeling. Now surf feeling is an interesting design. It is a bushing based system as well. It's very quite simple mechanically. All it has is this bushing in the center. So let's take it apart and see what this looks like. So here it is. There's your bushing. It's that simple. Now one thing you can do with this is that they have several different options on these bushings. You can go from harder to softer depending on if you want a looser feel. These are the softest bushings in the, they have in their lineup because I want the loosest feel. So here's my bottom line quick take on the surf feeling surf skate truck. I don't like it at all. I don't think it performs well. I don't think it gives you a very wide range of motion. I don't like how it sits up high off the ground. The way that the surf feeling boards are built, they're very tippy, they're not stable. It's not a relaxing, comfortable ride. It pumps and it carves, but not very well. And there are so many other options out there. These are 200 bucks. And a slide, for example, to me is 10 times better than a surf feeling for the same price. All in all, I do not recommend a surf feeling to anybody. And now we have the curve board. The curve board is an interesting design from Germany. If you look at it up close, now this is another one that I'm not going to take apart. I could unscrew these with these Allen wrenches here and, and right here, but I'm not going to because we don't need to. You can see the mechanics of how this works right here. You just have these kind of uh, interesting dual swivelers here. So here's my take on the curve board. I'm not a fan. And the reason why is because it just has this one dimension of motion. And what that means is you do not get nearly as much rail to rail lean as you get in other surf skate trucks. So as a result, it's more of just like the flow, like using your front foot and your hips to move it side to side instead of that full up and down compression and extension that you want to get in a surf skate pump. So as a result, I don't really even call this a surf skate truck personally. I would call the curve board a pumpable longboard cruiser. Now it is fun and my 11 year old daughter fell in love with it and that's the one that she rides above any of mine. So it has a function, it has a purpose, it has a use and there are lots of curve board fans. But just understand that you're not going to get as wide of a range as motion. The biggest thing is you're not going to get that rail to rail lean that personally I think you really want from a surf skate. Next we have the land yachts, what they call the bear banger. This comes on what they call their surf skates, their butter lines and their pocket knife. So you can see that this is a bushing based system. It's actually somewhat comparable to the design of the CX. It really just has kind of a different angle and it has these conical bushings. So let's take this apart and take a closer look. So that's it. That's all there is to the land yachts. It's essentially just an RKP with tall conical bushings. Here's my take on the land yachts. This ain't a surf skate truck. I do not like anything about this. I don't like how it performs at all. You can pump it, but only when you get speed. You can't start out pumping on it like you can legitimate surf skate trucks. It doesn't have nearly the range of motion as you get in legitimate surf skate trucks. The functionality I wanted out of the surf skate truck is pumping and carving. And this approximates both of them, but it doesn't hardly do them at all and not even close to what you get out of a legitimate surf skate truck. And to finish out our lineup, we have the Hamboards HST 200 truck. I'm not gonna take this one apart either because you can just see how simple the design is. Really all it is is one dimension of motion on that spring. It's that side to side. And the way a Hamboards works is you can see on this Pescadito that they just use the same truck on the front and the back. And that is what gives you the tight turning radius, not that it's like a surf skate truck on the front. Now you can see on this spring that it's a fairly 
tight spring and I don't like these at all for a lot of reasons. But one of the reasons is that when you're on this board, it has like the waterboard, a similar type of a tippy effect where you'll be in that center and then it'll, as soon as it hits that lean, it's gonna go fast and hard into that lean. There's nothing kind of delicate at all about it. It's like an all or nothing type of a tip to it. So it really takes some getting used to. But even aside from that, I put hand boards in a category all their own. To me, I honestly wouldn't even call them a surf skate. I guess, look, there's all kinds of definitions of what you mean by a surf skate. For me, like I said, it comes down to two core functionalities, pumpability and carvability. And you can't really pump the hand boards. You can if you're up to speed and if you're going down a decline but starting out you really can't pump them they're really just good for one purpose and that's like in mellow parking lots or with mellow declines and smooth pavement they're not portable it's not something that you can just grab and go so they're just not very versatile and personally i just don't like the feel but there are a lot of handboards enthusiasts out there personally i do not recommend handboards to anybody other than somebody who has a lot of other stuff already and really is just looking for more of a novelty board. All right, so now that you've seen all these surf skate trucks up close, let me just recap and bottom line it for you. In my opinion, the Smooth Star Thruster and the Yao S5 are the best technical surf trainers next to the Sweltech. The Sweltech is perhaps the most advanced technical surf trainer, but really for a very small percentage of riders. So these are a lot more stable than the Sweltech, a lot easier to ride, and in my opinion, these give you the smoothest, loosest, flowiest, most surf-like feel. Then you've got the Yao Meraki, which in my opinion is the highest quality, best all around surf skate truck. To me, it's tighter than either the S5 or the Thruster. And I personally like it better for that reason because it's better for more long distance street cruising. You've got the Carver C7, CX, and Slide, which I would put in a category of their own, which is basically the best beginner and intermediate all purpose surf skate trucks. I just personally prefer the feel of the Slide over either the C7 or the CX. The C7 is a looser, flowier, wider range of motion than probably either of them. The CX is a bushing based system, tighter, snappier, probably easier for most beginners because it's more stable, better for street cruising, not good for technical surf training. You have the Waterborne Surf Adapter, which is the cheapest way to get into surf skating, 79 bucks on Amazon. I like it, I don't love it. I think it performs well as a surf skate truck. I personally like the Meraki, the S5, and the Thruster much better than the Waterborne. And then you have the Flow, which is a terrible version of the slide. Bottom line, don't buy the flow. It's not functional, it's horrible design. You've got the surf feeling. I don't recommend surf feeling to anybody. You've got the curve board, which is an interesting design. In my opinion, not a technical surf skate because it doesn't give you a full rail to rail lean like most people are looking for in a surf skate, but it's a great long distance cruiser and it's an interesting and a fun ride. You've got the land yachts, bottom line, it's not a surf skate truck. Don't buy land yachts in my opinion. And then you've got the ham boards, which to me is in a category all its own. It's a unique, it's an interesting ride. It's not a ride that I like, but there are people out there who like it, but it's not gonna give you the quite the pumping and carving functionality that you're really looking for, or that I am personally looking for out of a surf skate truck. So I hope you find this helpful in choosing your surf skate.